Hello everybody and welcome back to another 51 Yarns episode. This is the Teaching Someone to Spin episode and I'm going to be joined by my friend Katie from the Green Bean podcast. She's also a very talented illustrator who you might have seen popping up at EYF this year. Safi, do not eat the microphone. <laughs> Naughty girl. <laughs> ah, my life. Anyway, so Katie came and joined me for a little bit of a spinning tutorial session. I just wanted to record this little bit to say that there were some things that I totally missed and didn't really pick up on when I was teaching Katie to spin. For example, the fact that she was doing the whole death grip thing that a lot of beginners do, almost everybody when they're a beginner has a bit of death grip on the fibre. I kind of completely missed that she was doing that because I was focusing on shooting a video at the same time. So my one top tip for teaching someone to spin is don't try and film it as an episode for your YouTube channel while you're teaching them. <laughs> If you know Katie from her podcast, you'll be seeing a completely different side of Katie. <laughs> so I really hope that you enjoyed it. For me, it was just a nice morning of uh, two friends hanging out, learning some new skills. And um, you'll notice that there is a particular tipping point where I kind of thought, right, there is something that I think might just get her hooked on spinning. So have a little look and see Enjoy, and I'll see you next time. So, here we are. Here we are. Awkward. <laughs> <laughs> How do I even start this? Uh, I don't know. You have to start it because it's your podcast. It's my podcast. Yeah. Cool. Hello everybody and welcome back to Stop <laughs> Laughing. <laughs> There's going to be outtakes. You <laughs> can see it now. There's going to be an outtake. Sorry. <laughs> Do you want me to go away? No, it's fine. Hello everybody and welcome to the Tiny Fiber Studio podcast. This is another 51 Yarns video and this week I'm doing a little bit of catching up because this is week 33 which is teaching somebody to spin and I have a slightly reluctant volunteer. I'm not a reluctant volunteer but I'm a definitely a reluctant spinner. <laughs> Why, why are you such a reluctant spinner? This is Katie from the Green Bean podcast by the way. Hello, I'm Katie. Um, I... I don't know why I'm a reluctant spinner. I feel like I should want to learn to spin, but it's never really appealed to me. And I've got loads of yarn. So I don't really need to learn to spin. I feel like it <laughs> could become a problem in my life if I had another fiber related hobby. But I guess I'm interested in the process. I'm quite happy to watch people spin, mm -hmm. but I've never felt, oh yeah, that's something I want to learn. Fair so enough. I'm the perfect volunteer. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, I when I've taught other people to spin, it's mostly been um, a, a sort of process of showing the historical methods of spinning and how they kind of progressed. So it starts with drafting and then drop spindle and then spinning wheel. Maybe. Okay. We'll see if we go on to the spinning one. <laughs> Just from a time point of view. Um, so, yeah, I like to kind of break that process down so mm -hmm. that you're not trying to do everything at the same time because that was what was a bit of a roadblock when it came to me learning to spin was that it was just kind of like, ah, oh, this, this is how you do it. And you're just looking at it going... <laughs> I have to say I have had no once idea. had a go on a spinning wheel and it was a little bit like that. Yeah. It's like... Yeah, there's too much stuff going yeah, on at the same time. I don't know what to do with it. I made some very fat, very overspun yarn. Fat, smart, fat, overspun yarns. Perfectly normal. Totally normal. So yeah, today we are going to be teaching Katie to spin. Um, possibly and with some help from cats. Trying not to stroke cats to which we are allergic. <laughs> yes. Katie, allergic to cats, didn't bring antihistamines. <laughs> This could also make for some entertainment. Also spinning. love cats and really want to stroke them. Yeah. 
and Safi has a new mouse, which currently still has its tail a whole, I don't know, five hours after she received it, which is a bit of a miracle. I'm impressed. <laughs> okay, so um, I got you some Corydale. Oh, thanks. Because Corydale's my favourite and it's also pretty easy to spin. Your favourite, favourite, favourite? Uh, well, my absolute favourite is carded Corydale. I could just spin that forever because you can literally just go like this repeatedly mm -hmm. and it just kind of spins itself, which is great. Um, but I'm Corydale's not a quite good one for learning with. I'm not allowed the one that's I don't have itself. any. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I've spun it all, it's spun this, or rather it has spun all of itself because okay. it spins itself that easily. <laughs> okay, um, so First thing is drafting. Mm -hmm. Have you drafted? Have you no. Drafted well, I mean, before? not knowingly. Sure. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so, from a historical point of view, before anybody figured out how to quickly put twist in, mm -hmm. um, they did it a bit more manually. So, you'd basically, drafting is just grabbing hold of a few fibres and then putting some twist in them. So, they would have put some twist in by kind of rolling it along something. Mm -hmm. And then just pinching to draft a little bit more out. Okay, so this is spinning before you even have a spindle. Yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. And then if they ran out, they would just kind of get some more and put this that in. Is done by a true professional. I don't think mine's going to look like that. <laughs> <laughs> the important thing is just getting used to just this process and how it feels to be pulling a little bit of fibre out mm -hmm. and also feeling when you get to a point where it starts to pull really quite easily because that's when you're running out of staple length yeah and the staple lengths have to kind of overlap in order for the yarn to actually kind of hold together that at least i do i guess because i worked in a yarn factory for the last it couple is. of years so i do know about <laughs> that some kind least. of background <laughs> Not complete random off the screen. <laughs> so I'm right handed, which mm -hmm. you did, you were pulling it out with your right hand and holding it in your left. So that's what I'm going to aim for. It probably works better on tights than it does on jeans. <laughs> oh, I'd look, see now it's going to break. Cool. So where it's getting thinner there is the end of two lots of staple length. Um, <laughs> you're a pretty girl, Safi. You're such a pretty <laughs> girl, Why are you playing with wool instead of playing yeah. with me? Yeah, look, it's thinner there, isn't it? Should I break it? Go for it. Thanks. That's my first bit of yarn. Yay! <laughs> so I guess you want to be starting a new bit of staple all the time. Yeah, yeah, you want to be kind of part way um, with them overlapping pretty much all the time. It's a good job you don't work Thanks, from Harry, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Whenever I've considered it, I always think I just I would never get anything done if it involved a computer. They would constantly be trampling all over the keyboard. And... At least my pet sits in the corner when I'm working, <laughs> for the most part. Thank you, Safi. Good girl. Good girl. I'm getting. Great. I'm pulling it out, but I'm not twisting it very much. That's fine. But you feel like you you're getting the hang of. Yeah. But I'm gonna, you're going to give me a tool that's going to help me with the twisting. So yeah. I don't have to roll it along my <laughs> leg like a peasant. <laughs> yeah, it's not the uh, the easiest way to. No, but. I mean, I'm guessing it is a good way to to get a feel for. They would have done this straight off the sheep, or would they have? Uh, kind of yeah, probably not with much processing, I would imagine. And it probably would have been plant fibres initially. Mm. Okay. That's it. I know, there's wool, I know, I know. It's so it's exciting, good. isn't it? Look, I'm spinning. 
Yeah. And I'm not bored yet. <laughs> Perfect. Beautiful. Lovely. Can so. I home now? <laughs> nope, stay right where you are. <laughs> okay. <coughs> um, next thing I think is this one. So there's, there's all sorts of like rocks with holes in and things like that that they would have attached yarn to to start spinning. Um, but in terms of a next step progression from what you've just been doing, this might be kind of useful. Because now we've got something that we can twist <laughs> and that Safi can helping. <laughs> You're very helpful, cats. Sorry, do you want to come on my lap? Okay. That's fine. <laughs> That's very convenient. <laughs> this is now twist going in and staying in because you don't mm -hmm. have to manage the already twisted bit. So I'll just, I'll get this bit onto the spindle for you, hopefully. Want to twist in the would same you, direction? Would you naturally want to twist it that way or that way? Is it like when you're snowboarding, do you ride goofy or yeah. uh, regular? Uh, that way. Yeah. Okay. Let's do it. Why do you have the thread there? Tell me about uh, the thread. So the thread is called the leader. And it's basically just because it's helpful if you have something for it to start with. And it's cotton, is it? Um, this particular one is cotton, yeah. Could be pretty much anything and a lot of... Oh, here goes the tail of the mouse. <laughs> Safi, stop chewing the tail of your mouse, please. Oh, look. So Mousy Nayart now has no tail. Because somebody, somebody chewed it off, didn't they? Poor Mousy. Poor oh, second Mousy. Thing. Yeah. Do you chew those off as well? No, that usually stays on. That stays. Can you sit there? Good girl. I'm sure this mm. is going to go very well. Good girl. Um, okay, so I've just started it off with a little bit of twisting. So now you're going to be able to keep the twist in the arm. Am I? Did it tighten up there where you couldn't really draft it? A little bit. Yeah. But not too much. Just... Is it okay that it curls up? Totally like fine. Well, uh, yeah. <laughs> Oh, lots. So the bit where you could feel it kind of tighten up and it was mm. harder to draft is just because the twist is getting into up all of these fibres, it's just travelling up. Which isn't necessarily a problem. Um, I mean, it I guess just, it just has the effect that it's going to make it a little bit harder to draft. Tell me there's something that makes it easier to do this twisting motion. <laughs> uh, yeah, when we start using the spindle properly. <laughs> I was going to say, this is not That's what designed. I've seen people doing. And it's quite slow. Yeah. It's very slow. Yeah. So eventually, be. somebody works out that uh, if you have something called a whirl that will allow the stick to continue spinning for longer than it would just on its own, then you can put twist in a lot faster. So we're going to add the <gasps> whirl onto it. That's what a whirl is. I don't know what a whirl is. I'm over the top. I'm going to have to break you. You're going to bite my yarn. Sorry. But you can't break it. It's, it's so, so strong. awesome. It's so awesome. It's so strong. I can't even break it. <laughs> Okay. But you're going to magically join it up again. Yeah. 
Because wool's magic that way. Mm. Although it's really nice oh, just that's... having you there. You're really chilled. I'm going to give you a bit longer. If I sneeze, then you go in. <laughs> that's the deal. <laughs> I'm gonna break a piece of this yarn, this fibre off because it's a little bit unwieldy. I'm mean, gonna keep it out of the way. Doesn't the spindle just start turning back the other way? It will do at some point. point. Yeah. Yeah. When it gets too much twist in it, then it will just start going in the opposite direction. There you go. Okay. Uh -huh. So eventually. That's the kind of thing that's that you're aiming yeah, for. I'm going to be able to do that right away. However, <laughs> when I was taught to do this, <coughs> and somebody was like, oh yeah, you can just do this, I was rubbish. See you later, Dexter. Because there was one little extra thing that they could have told me that they didn't, um, which was that you don't have to be drafting and putting twist in at the same time. Right. So you can just put twist in and then stop and kind of park it between your knees and then just do some drafting. So we're going to try that. It's called park and draft. I've heard that phrase before. There you go. That is where it comes from. Getting more yeah, bingo to <laughs> Okay. So... We would put a little bit of twist in. Way. Yeah. But then once some twist is built up, then we can park it and just let some twist into the fiber. Mm -hmm. And then it's just a question of judging how much twist you think it can take out before it starts falling apart. <laughs> And the cats have helpfully gone upstairs. Are they up to mischief? So what, am I probably. spinning it now or pulling it? Um, so try, you probably draft a tiny bit. Could I? Draft, that's the proper word, not pulling it. Pulling, drafting, we know what you mean. <laughs> I think I want to make yarn fatter than you want to make. <laughs> but I broke it. <laughs> Save it. Yeah. No. no. <laughs> Can you save it for me, Bex? Yep. Can I save it for myself? Mm. So you do the spinning. Why do you, why am I not able to do this? Is it because I'm using my kind left like hand? Kind of like a flick. So from here, like a little flick. My left, left hand, hand is completely useless. Oh, okay. <laughs> that might be the, oh no, no, no that was better. Oh, okay. And then what am I going to do if I want to wind it up a bit? I'm going to do that. That's it. <laughs> <laughs> there is a degree of sort of starting to become a little bit ambidextrous at some point. Oh, look at that. That's too um, long, isn't it? Is that too long? Oh, don't go that way. <laughs> so if it's going, if it's starting to go back in the opposite direction so almost immediately two. after you've put twist in, then there's two, there's already Thanks. its quota of twist in there. What do we think? That's... Looks Ooh. like yarn to me. Yeah, <laughs> I'd buy it. But then I'd buy almost any yarn. <laughs> 
This is probably a question that's far too advanced for my level, but how do you apply it? Uh, so you would uh, basically fold it on itself. Can I say I'm struggling to see why people would do this for fun? <laughs> At this point. I mean, I'm still open to, to learning, but there's a definite hump in the learning of, <laughs> of lots of things not going right and you going, ah, this is really annoying. But then at some point, when you get to a stage where you're able to put twist in and draft and all of the things at the same time, then it's like, oh, no, this could be quite relaxing. Really? <laughs> Believe it or not. Ah, look, see, why is that relaxing? That's not fun. <laughs> Stressful. I sense that you've also probably given me the easiest fibres to work with. One of the, yeah, one of the easier, I would say. What is difficult? Um, something like, like merino, I don't find the easiest thing to teach people to spin with because it's quite slippery. Is it because the staple's quite short too? Yeah. Does it matter how I'm winding it down here? Uh, not particularly, unless your name is Evanita. <laughs> that's um, not my name. That's good. What do you want, Safi? Um, do you want to help? Safi, darling. Do you want to help? I, I need all the help I can get, <laughs> I think. Where are you going? That way? Meanwhile, it goes the other way. What I might try it with is slightly heavier spindle as well. I thought that was one of the cats there. <laughs> <laughs> they do make small human noises sometimes. But... Don't look at me. <laughs> I don't know if I've ever seen you doing this for fun. I will say I'm not normally a spindle spinner. Only because as much as I appreciate people who do lots of spindle spinning and it looks beautiful, it's also not the quickest way to make yarn and I'm quite impatient. How does it look different? Um, so can you tell by looking at it whether it's... Not the yarn not. itself, just the winding of the cop, which is this bit of yarn that's wrapped around at this particular stage, that's called the cop. And this is supposed to look beautiful. In some people's, it looks beautiful. In mine, you saying mine it doesn't. doesn't. <laughs> in mine, it doesn't. In some people's, it does. I'll put a link in the description to somebody who's uh, cop winding also always looks beautiful. Particularly when she does Turkish spindles. What's a Turkish spindle? Well, funny you should ask. Uh oh. I feel like I'm gonna learn. <laughs> <laughs> the hard way. <laughs> <laughs> yep, yeah, don't ask if you don't want to learn. Uh, Turkish spindle. Yes. This fun thing. Wait, I'm spinning at the same time, is that okay? <laughs> it's fine. Do, not, do I need to pay attention? Look how fat those bits are. <laughs> it's all yarn and the thing that I learned from knitting my first hand spun was that actually you can really tell where the thick and thin bits were. It just kind of all evened itself out eventually. Plus it's the thing, isn't it, that some hand spun 
it seems like they try and make it look funny like that. Or is that yeah, thick and thin, which it's is actually thing. quite difficult to do. Well, look at me then. <laughs> <laughs> Get that. I'd be interested to try this with a heavier spindle and see if that makes it easier because that would spin for a bit longer. Maybe a bit, okay. But yeah, a, a Turkish okay, spindle. Pay attention, Katie. Put it down. See, I already can't put it down. <laughs> We're getting somewhere. It's a rather fabulous bit of woodworking where that bit slides inside there. All of that goes on there, and then it's still a spindle, but you have somewhere to wrap your yarn around at the bottom. <laughs> I so it goes the other way up, so you... Yeah, basically. Show me, please. Well, let's see if I can spin a leader. It doesn't have a hook. Out. It doesn't. It has... Uh, you basically do a little not at the top of it. I'm going to see if I can spin myself a leader. This is the other alternative to having a leader. So you can just tie a knot. Tie a knot after you've spun a little bit. And see if it... Is it like knitting? So that looks. tying a knot is generally frowned upon. Uh, no. But some people are very much on the side of you don't need to use a leader, you can just spin a little bit of yarn in the twisting along your leg way. So when you've spun a little bit, put a bit more twist in that one. And you can then Here we go. wrap it. Uh, so you go over two, under one each time. Yeah. And then it starts making pretty patterns. Is this what you were talking about when you said it looks pretty? There is, yeah. There's, there are people who pay a huge amount of attention to winding it on so that it all looks really pretty when you've got particularly yarns that have uh, a gradient because you start seeing the gradient all happening. I think I might be that person. Yeah, I think you probably would be. Because <laughs> <laughs> it all starts looking fancy at the top. Mm -hmm. Still, though, it's well slow. It is well slow, yeah. Why wouldn't you just go and buy a ball of yarn? Do you want to go on a spinning wheel? No, I don't think I'm ready. I want to try this <laughs> thing first. <laughs> oh, so you do a little knotty at the top. Yeah, so you just... Um, I mean, it's not a knot. But I, I just basically twist my finger around and then... Put it in there, makes it look so easy. And it's so thin. Uh, I normally just bring a finger up here until it releases that knot on top. Is it? That's very pleasing, isn't it? <laughs> and now I could get into this. <laughs> it reminds me of um, Japanese tamari balls. Mm. 
Yeah, not that I've ever tried yes. making them, no. but I've always <laughs> wanted to. Oh, there's my nice fat bit. You can tell when it goes from like spinning to Katie spinning. <laughs> And then just leave enough yarn so that you can oh, yeah. still loop it around at the top. What was that finger thing that you did? That. No. That's it. And then I can't work out from there which way you go through. Not, not that <laughs> way. That way. Making it look so simple here. <laughs> There you go. That's it. And you can get Turkish spindles with hooks in them. Just that particular one. Why would you need a hook when you can do that cover well, knotty thing? Yeah. And the other totally genius thing about these is that when you've finished, you can take the wooden bits apart but still leave the yarn wrapped around in the same way. Have I got enough yarn for you to show me that or not yet? Mm, probably not. <laughs> Man, that's disappointing. <laughs> How does one keep this out of the way? I normally tuck it on my sleeve. So if it's hard to draft, what I would do is not put any more twist in until you've drafted out a little bit more. This one's got some nice floofy bits. <laughs> okay, Dexter. It's not something for you to play with. Come here. <laughs> Come on. Stop making Katie's allergies worse. Right, that's it. Ed. Good boy. Look at the lovely yarn. Katie's making yarn. Feel it. Katie's making yarn. Yeah. I am making yarn. You can buy really beautiful Turkish spindles. Yes, you can. <laughs> I suspect that might be my point of danger. Yeah. <laughs> I do like lovely wooden things. This one is made of uh, 5,000 year old English bog oak, which I find quite pleasing because I think at some point somebody probably stood under that tree drop spindling and then 5,000 years later, somebody probably are. stood under that tree learning to drop spin. That's it. Cursing. And... <laughs> <laughs> Would they have been using a Turkish spindle though? Uh, that's a great question. I don't know about, enough about the history of Turkish spindles to be able to say. Oh, that's good. <laughs> oh dear. <laughs> that goes. Button. That's it, yeah. <laughs> right, so what do I do when I've had enough for the evening or my mum's on the phone or, or uh, Just wind it on as much as you can, do the little loop thing and then you can just leave it because the twist won't really go anywhere from there. And could I, if I wanted to, not saying that I do, <laughs> Um, knit with this as singles, or would I really need to ply it? You could knit with it as singles. Um, you'd have to keep in mind that singles always has a bit of bias to it. So if you're just doing something in stocking stitch, stocking out, it's gonna go. Okay. Yeah. Ooh, thanks. It's beautiful. It is beautiful. Look how pretty. 
Oh, I sense a new Pinterest board coming on. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, yeah, I could get into that. <laughs> Mm. It's very, very pleasing. So what happens? Do you go like out to the edge and then do you start going back into the middle with the wrapping? Yeah, again? so at some point you just decide that you've gone far and out far enough out up the arms and then you just start again from the middle. Tell me people call it a turtle. Uh oh. people do call it a turtle good because it doesn't look like a turtle. Look, you just spin and be fat. <laughs> And then stay there. <laughs> Bex, can you start? Shall I just get some? <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> Otherwise, I'm gonna get grumpy. <laughs> it should be said that Katie is one of those people who is so good at so many things that she gets quite cross if she can't. I don't know do what you're talking about. Something. So, is it true that if you wanted to spin a thicker yarn, you would use a bigger spindle, or is that yeah. not really a thing? Usually, yeah. Okay. Is that why all your spindles are tiny? Because you like making tiny yarn? Yeah, pretty much. I started with this one. This was the one that I learnt on. And it does feel like it's it quite just enormous. quite heavy, yeah. And that coupled with the whole omission of the idea of park and draft didn't really help. <laughs> and there's also the other thing on this one is that there's no um, slot for mm. the yarn to go in, just and so sometimes it just feels like it wants to already, unwind. Already annoying. But you can do, do the, spin the little twisty thing, thing, which sometimes helps. Um, oh, Sappy. Oh. <laughs> Sappy, leave, no, leave the slipper alone. So roughly how many hours of practice do you think I need before I don't feel completely incompetent and useless? Because I think that's the key here, if I'm going to carry this on. I don't think it took me more than about... Uh, I don't know, four or five? Like, you do... You, you Months? Pick a... <laughs> no, years. <laughs> I'm kidding. It's basically, uh, my tolerance for feeling crap is <laughs> quite low. And... Um, if this is going to be something that I do, I need to not feel like an idiot. <laughs> which, you know, sounds like, oh, I only do things if I'm good at them, which is true. <laughs> <laughs> but I guess I want to feel like I can see some progress. Yeah. I do think you you feel like you're making progress fairly quickly. Okay. So what we need then is a check-in point for my next lesson, <laughs> okay. maybe some homework, which may or may not include purchasing a spindle. And I guess I would need some fibre, so I no longer uh, have ready access to lots of fibre. Oh wait, I seem to have omitted the bit where I wind it up. That's why it's getting longer and longer. <laughs> I don't like the big ones yeah. as much as the smaller ones. Yeah. I was just kind of interested to see whether it would be easier because in theory it would spin for longer even with thicker yarn. But Oh, it's very twisty down there. Would you leave my slipper alone, please? Hey. Yeah, I'm definitely more into the pretty winding business pretty than winding. this. Looks like I'm twisting it the wrong way, but I'm not. I'm going the same way as I was. 
Let's need more twists. Sappy. I don't trust letting it go yet. Oh, nearly, nearly. Yeah. No. <laughs> Okay, so for joining, the easiest thing is put some twist in whatever you've got left. Um, and then... <laughs> well, you might don't want this bit. <laughs> What's wrong with this bit? <laughs> Grab a sort of wider fluffy bit. And give it a little bit of. Oh, look, he's gone there. Crossways. Because in theory, oh, like it goes in by itself, in. like when you hold it too close. It's not the neatest joint in the entire universe, but you know, we'll it's neat. Just regard one. that. <laughs> okay, so. Um, Pay attention. Spinning wheel, that's. I think. Do you think we should save the spinning I wheel for round two? I think we should save the spinning wheel for round two. Okay. I'm scared um, of your spinning wheels. I feel like they're precious. That's fine. Not precious. So, uh, the refinement that I would try and work on is drafting towards the spindle. Oh my god. <laughs> I've got an idea. Drafting towards the spindle. Yeah. Is that short forward draw? Yes. Not long backward draw. Not long back draw. Okay. Because... Look at me, I know stuff. <laughs> Why would I want to do that? Uh, only because from when you're beginning... Um, It's nice to have an assistant, isn't it, Dexter? Mm. Just because it'll make this bit a little bit neater. Yeah, I was making a right part of I think part of what was tricky was that this would get a bit more bunched up and then it would end up getting caught up in the yarn. So if you're drafting kind of this direction instead, then that shouldn't happen. Mm -hmm. A little bit easier. Spin! <laughs> Make it spin! <laughs> Quick! <laughs> That's it. You're getting it, yeah. I'm bunching it again though. Spin you. <laughs> Bunch. Oh yeah, look, there's a nice fat bit. <laughs> the other thing you can do is to try splitting the fibre down a little bit. Or try getting really tall. <laughs> <laughs> Has anyone ever marketed drop spindles as cat toys? Think that's <laughs> I don't think there's any modification needed, really. No. There we go, I'm done. <coughs> Beautiful. Have I got enough to make a jumper now? <laughs> <laughs> I remember when I first started knitting and I thought that one ball of yarn was enough to make a jumper. Yeah. And then I was I horrified when I went to buy my first sweater quantity and how expensive it was going to be. Can you do anything to rescue this fibre now that I've mangled all of it? Or is it's fine. Is that... This is it. This is what it's become. Yeah. Can I take it home? Of course you can. So if I want to ply it, obviously I can't ply this because it's all... I'll just do that. Mm -hmm. Okay, ready to knit? Done. <laughs> You do, if you're applying it, um, 
you would either do I need at this thing? stage but you could wind it off onto something else like a toilet roll you know that kind of thing um or you can do a really fun thing called an Andy and Klein bracelet get in I'm ready <laughs> Uh, I think they tuck one end up inside my watch strap. What if I don't have a watch? Or hairband, something like that. Yep. And then you go up over your middle finger, around the back, and then up over your middle finger from the opposite direction. Mm -hmm. And you just keep doing that. Because it does this magic thing where it never ever tangles up. Hold on, should I be trying to do this with this one? So I'm learning. Here we go. Right, so I'm going to break this and tuck it in my imaginary watch. <laughs> and then over my middle finger. Yeah, like that. Mm -hmm. Around, around the back wrist. And then up over the right hand side of your middle finger. Yeah. Like that. Yeah. And then round the back again. Mm -hmm. uh, left again. Uh, we? So on that side it's always going to come up from the right. That's it. So it keeps going on the right. Am I doing it right? Okay. Looks like what you've got so that's okay. I'm assuming I'm trying not to cut off the circulation in my middle yeah. finger. Yeah. If you get to that stage, you can just slip this off and just leave it on your wrist and then just start again. And it doesn't get tangled up even then. No. I don't know who made it, who created this, but they're absolute magicians. I need to think about this for a Oh look, we've gone back from Katie spinning to Beck spinning now. <laughs> <laughs> Do you know what? That first lot wasn't that bad. No, see? I think actually the first lot was the best I did. <laughs> I think I got worse. Does that still count as your No, the Turkish. See, the Turkish is, is really consistent as well. Are you just being kind? No. Because <laughs> that's the first thing you notice is not necessarily that the yarn gets thinner but it just it gets more consistent. Mm. Right, what do I do when I get to the leader? Uh, then oh, it's just gonna come off. You can stop. It's just gonna break because I'm the leader as well. So then we need to get the two ends. So on mine this end's still attached, but wherever the end was on yours, and you take it off your middle finger. Mm -hmm. um, get the two ends and then you need to attach those to the leader somehow whether that involves tying a knot or whatever that's fine or maybe a slip, slip knot because you're not really going to be able to do a full knot from that. Well, there's a bit of uh, yarn left on mine no, no, fibre so yeah. do. in theory I should be able to twist it on Right. Okay. Another trick is it needs to be spun in the opposite direction to whichever way it was originally spun. So spun that way. And this will be so interesting because I can't remember which way I spun this, but you know, we'll see. Oh, I spun it the same way to join it. So <laughs> hang on, hang about. That was the right way. Isn't that sad? Yeah. I'm not going to drop it, am I? Am I going to drop it? Am I just going to do this? You can just do it that way. I don't think I'm Maybe going until you should, to not yeah, sure it's attached. Going, yeah, it's going in the right direction. How do I know it's going in the right direction? Uh, if it's not falling apart, you're good. <laughs> it's not falling apart. It's looking very flimsy now. <laughs> And then I'm just 
keep your hand or keep your wrist inside this bit. So. And then just when you get to the top bit, you can just pull a little bit more up. Oh, and then I want to wind it on here. Yeah. Uh, that way. <laughs> <laughs> Beautiful. Beautiful. Look at it. Nothing wrong with that. <laughs> I should have pulled out my first yarn. Would that have made me feel better about myself? It's, it was just, you know, very much a beginner yarn. This is my favourite thing. Flying. Mm hmm. Ah, flying. There we go. Uh, so, we've basically got you on Turkish spindles and flying. Mm. I've made a little nice. bit there. Does that matter? I mean, I'm not going to be making the jumper. <laughs> Turkish spindles because they're pretty, and flying because it starts to actually look like something I recognise. <laughs> what if I wanted to make a three ply? Is that just advanced? Uh, then you would, you'd need to find, you definitely need to rewind it onto something. What do I do with or, the end? Uh, just let it go. Look at that! It stays twisted. That is yarn. That is officially yarn. I'm very proud of you, well done. I am very proud of myself. I'm Good. proud of my teacher. <laughs> <laughs> is this made of graphite? Uh, it's carbon fibre, hmm. I believe. That's an Acheworks special. And it is one of the. So, if you did want to do something like a three ply or, or more, um, these spindles, because you can take these off. Um, you can literally just kind of have them positioned horizontally with just a single on each of them. Mm -hmm. So you'd have three um, shafts and then you could ply off them onto another spin. Instead of having to wrap it around, it just blew my mind. Hi. So, I don't know whether I'm going to battery or... So now can I take this off here and take it home as a memento? You certainly can. Look at that. That bracelet thing was great. Isn't it? I loved it. <laughs> I really need to turn off vertical recording. Look at that. Can I, do I need to tie a knot down here to stop it coming apart? Uh, no, it should be fine. You might need to uh, protect from cats, but... Yeah. <laughs> That, ladies and gentlemen, is my first yarn, which Dexter is about to destroy. <laughs> it's not for you, it's for me. Look at that. Yay. <laughs> there you go. She tells me <laughs> I can make exactly the yarn I want. That, that's obviously exactly the yarn you The want. yarn I've been dreaming of. Right, well, I'm buying some fibre next time I go to John Armour. <laughs> <laughs> so, have we? Have I taught you to spin? Yes. Excellent. You I have. I'll take that off my list. Um, and do you feel yourself going down a little bit of a fibre rabbit hole? I don't know. <laughs> I think I don't want to forget. So, I think I probably will get a spindle and practice. But I don't think I've really got space in my life yeah. at the moment. Like literal space for yeah. fibre and time to invest in learning that I would actually rather spend knitting at the moment. Yeah. I can fully appreciate that. But I will give it a go. I, do. I will check in for lesson two at the wheel. Fantastic. Um, but yeah, I am more convinced than I was two hours ago. Yes. <laughs> 
which I think is what we were aiming for. That was exactly what we were aiming for. <laughs> so there we go. Uh, that was work th week 33 of the 51 Yarn Spin Along. This is Katie Green of the Green Bean Podcast. Thank you for having me. <laughs> <laughs> Who has put up with my cats setting off every I mean, allergy she has going. They're, they're not too good. <laughs> I can cuddle you now because I'm going to go home. They're so cute. Yeah, oh, I've got the I'm small one. I thought I had the big yeah. one. I've got the small one. <laughs> they do basically one. look the same, unless you're. I need very, them very to compare familiar. so I know yeah. which one is which. When I've only got one, I can't tell. Yeah. Actually, I've got both the other ones here. <laughs> so, yeah. Thank you very much for watching. Um, I will see you again next week. Thanks. Bye. <laughs>